right. So th- it it, it kind of it seemed as though this year's legislative session in Minnesota was going to be a good one, <laughs> a good one for progressives, perhaps legalized marijuana was on the table. What else was on the table, uh, Alicia and Tyler? They, they was talking about doing some good shit around there, like paid sick leave, if I'm not mistaken, paid family leave, something along those lines. Mind you, in Minnesota, they had Democrat majorities in their state legislature, Democratic majority in the House, Democratic majority in the Senate. And this week, that majority actually did something kind of cool as it pertained to protecting rideshare drivers and doing something to, you know, (laughs) make sure that they earn, I guess, a living wage, even though we want a thriving wage, but okay, living. If that's the bare minimum that we can get, we could just get enough to live on. We can't get enough to thrive on. But regardless, a, a living wage for rideshare drivers, Lyft and Uber drivers, and some more protections were on the table for them. So actually, let's check out this piece from Care 11 News out of Minnesota, Minneapolis, who breaks down what could have been or ought to have been a historic piece of legislation. Let's take a look. The bill's passed and and it's title agreed to. This was the huge moment of celebration for drivers after the Senate passed the bill 35 to 32 just over 12 hours ago. It's a success for the Minnesota Uber Lyft Drivers Association, whose members have been fighting for better working conditions. The bill includes minimum pay rates as well as protections against being fired. While advocates say it's a step towards fair pay, the companies say it'll make things a lot worse for passengers who will be saddled with high fees. Uber saying in a statement, quote, unfortunately, what we're left with is a bill rushed through in the final hours that'll leave hundreds of low income and disabled riders stranded and thousands of drivers without work. Lyft says, quote, this bill would destroy rideshare for the majority of Minnesotans. And they also added that fares would more than double. Now, because of this, the companies have sent letters to Governor Walls urging him to not sign the bill. And again, Governor Walls has not indicated whether or not he will sign it. But it's important to know that during his time as governor, he has not vetoed any bill. So that kind of gives us a sign that it's likely to be signed by him. Guys, back to you. Let me run this video for you guys. This was, uh, I'll come back and credit it in a second. I got to pick my phone up. But check out the drivers that had assembled at the Minnesota Capitol and had made their presence felt inside of, of the chamber, inside of the legislature to push for the passing of this bill. Let's take a look. <laughs> those drivers black they from the continent and most of them are somali yo when i went to minneapolis for the first time ever in my life in 2019 i took my mom to paisley park to go that's prince's house (laughs) because my mother's a tremendous prince fan neither of us had ever been to minnesota at all love 
lovely place. Lovely, lovely. And of course we had to ride share everywhere. And when we got to Shanhassen where Prince, where Prince live, and we stayed at the hotel, well, I'm, I'm, I've said all that to say everywhere that we caught ride share, I don't think we had a white driver once. <laughs> okay. Everybody was, was definitely non-white and a couple Youngins was definitely from the Horn of Africa. And I remember asking one of the drivers, the one who actually picked us up from our hotel in Shanhassen. You familiar with Shanhassen, Elisa? We stayed at the hotel, I think, that shared a parking lot with the hula hands. And that was like a very unimpressive hula hands. Shout out to the good hula hands. Uh, Infinite content. They still got their hula hands open out City Ave. <laughs> That's one of the better hula hands. There's a good hula hands also in St. Louis. That one in Minnesota wasn't all that, but regardless, regardless. So he picked us up the drive the ride share driver. I, I didn't know. I didn't ask him was he Somali, but I assumed he was from the Horn of Africa because he, you know, resembled uh, our East African brethren. And and I asked him. I said, "Are the people nice to you?" And he and he didn't understand the question. I, I basically said, "Are the white people nice to you? <laughs> are, the, are the white people nice to you out here?" And he said, "Yes." And I could see how he could say that because I gotta say. I've been to several, several regions around this country. The whites in Minnesota, the nicest whites. I mean, they were so friendly. And I noticed crackers everywhere. But these whites, I have to say, again, I, 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 I was kind of taken aback by how friendly these whites were. The super friendly whites. But anyway, so I said that to say, Alicia and Tyler, y'all can co-sign. Right. It's, we've seen in, in pictures. A lot of these rideshare drivers are are of African descent. They are black folks out there. Okay. And you would think, and you, and, and, and we can share in their excitement that the Minnesota legislature passed this bill that would improve their working conditions. And surely when it gets sent to the desk of the democratic governor, surely he will sign it into law. Is that what y'all think happened? <laughs> we talk about Democrats here. Is that what y'all think happened? Will do me a favor, pop up that Sahara Journal piece if you don't mind, please. Oh, look at there they go. Y'all people, Democratin once again. <laughs> Let me scroll up and get to the headline. Because I said, surely this motherfucker didn't do this. Yes. Governor Tim Waltz vetoes rideshare bill against uber drive against uber and lyft drivers wishes now i don't think that these were merely wishes of the rideshare drivers i think they wanted a fundamental change or an improvement to their material condition which tim waltz promptly dashed their dreams of you know earning a a a better wage than which they were currently earning i don't know what brand of did you pop up the article will did, did, did we read i think that did the people need to get that headline that tim waltz vetoed this shit dog he vetoed this shit against drivers workers let me go to more perfect union real quick I, it, that that tweet is not in there will hold on um it said that this was uh, when did they post this do i not have the data I didn't do that good of a screenshot. Oh, no. Okay. This was the 25th. So this is recent. It says breaking. It says Uber has threatened to end service across Minnesota, except for, quote, premium products, end quote, in Minneapolis and St. Paul, if Governor Tim Waltz signs a recently passed bill giving rideshare drivers a minimum wage. Uber said and Lyft said that they were basically going to end their services in, in Minnesota if Governor Tim Waltz signed off on this bill that would give workers better conditions. Now, it's funny, guys, because what happens in states or even at the federal level, like when the legislative chamber is held by one party, and then in the executive branch, the occupant is also of the same party. Usually all that agenda is, is all in there together, right? Because we see how Republicans do when they get in the fucking power, right? They don't be bullshitting. They don't fuck around. If the Republicans run the legislative chamber and the executive chamber, they, they are in lockstep. But when it comes to Democrats, it's always the house of the people doing or at least attempting to do the people's work in the executive the executive 
always stymieing progress in favor of corporate wishes. How many times are the, like, how the fuck are you going to win elections like this, man? How the fuck can you win elections like this? You keep standing against your own constituents. And this starts at the top with Joe Biden. Joe Biden has fucked over workers. Well, this is his entire political career, even though he claims to be union Joe. Well, when he got to be president, Joe, he said, fuck them unions. You better tell them railroad workers that they better not strike or else. You can't put the economy in peril. You can only you you can put your own safety in peril and the, and the safety of the communities in which these railroads traverse through. But you can't put the economy in peril by striking for better, better working conditions. Union members. I haven't checked the latest to see what Walt's response. I, like, I mean, has he said something? <laughs> I mean, because I think I think this news broke earlier today that Governor Waltz vetoed this bill. And I got to say, shameful, shameful. There was a lot of optimism coming out of this year's legislative session in Minnesota. And it's like the Democrats are cutting off the nose despite their face. They are snatching victory. Oh, wait, wait, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, doing exactly that. What the fuck are people going to vote for y'all for? What the fuck would anybody vote Democrat for? Because this is the brand now. <laughs> this, this is the brand and the brand is strong. But it doesn't stop there. Will, if you could pull up the other piece, I think this is from the Minnesota Post or the Minnesota Reformer. I have a lot of our articles pulled up. Bear with me, everybody, because... So the Minneapolis City Council actually passed something cool. Hold on, let me pull this up. I don't have it in front of me. But basically what they wanted to do was to extend controls on rent. Yes, hold on, let me get this up. Let me get this up. Minneapolis City Council votes for rent control, but Frey vows to veto. What? <laughs> is going on what the fuck is going on this one is from what is this from yeah this is from the minnesota post is it the post reformer gang shout out to all the independent media we love you we appreciate you thank you so much for bringing us this perspective it says minneapolis city council yes votes for rent control fray vows to veto get off the mm. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Frey delivered the State of the City address at the, that's a Leaf North, at the Leaf North uh, offices in Near North. There's Leaf North in Near North, Minnesota, Minneapolis, everybody, uh, just west of downtown on Thursday. Why did they tell me all that? People in Minneapolis don't know where that is. <laughs> that's a strange thing. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry, let me get to this. So it says a divided Minneapolis City Council on Thursday voted to move ahead with putting a rent control policy to the city's voters in November, hours before Mayor Jacob Frey said that he'll veto it. The council's action, while only a step in the multi-stage process, was at least a momentary victory for supporters of the strictest rent control options and a defeat for those who want to quash the idea entirely. Frey's veto likely means that negotiating for potential compromises will have to happen sooner rather than later if the issue has a chance to make it onto the November ballot. Jacob Frey in Minneapolis vetoing progressive. I, again, and again, and again, I, I, I don't, I don't want to lay too much praise upon these policies because I don't know them intricately. I don't know what the details are of this rent control. Um, I, I just don't know. Right. So I hear rent control. I assume that means good. <laughs> right. I assume that means good. And Jacob Frey is against it. I assume that means bad. And that, 
is not the first time, even this year, that we have seen so-called Democratic mayors stand in opposition to progressive policies either passed outright by city councils or, you know, very, very hard pushed back against. You guys remember earlier this year, I covered that the D.C. City Council, in a very lengthy process over the period of a few years, voted to rewrite rewrite certain parts of its criminal code that had not been updated in about 100 years. And Muriel Bowser, the Democratic mayor, the Black woman mayor of Washington, D.C., vetoed this. And her veto was overridden by the D.C. City Council. And then House Republicans got involved because of D.C. doesn't really have autonomy over its laws. Every single law passed in the District of Columbia is subject to congressional review. And this law, where the city council tried to rewrite the criminal code, was seized upon by House Republicans as a piece of, you know, loose on crime, soft on crime propaganda. And who were the House GOP joined with? Who, everybody? Joe fucking Biden. You got that right. Isn't it funny how Democrats do some Republican shit? (laughs) <laughs> when they get good and ready, Joe Biden stood with House Republicans and and defeated, defeated the D.C. City Council's own law. Joe Biden signed the House's disapproval resolution, which, OK, was not only just passed by the House, but passed by the Senate, which means Senate Democrats had to vote for the shit, too. So look at this Democratic brand. Look at this fucking brand. Standing against the will of voters, standing always with police, standing against workers at every opportunity. What I I, I mean, the Democrats are the best Republicans. <laughs> they, 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 are, they are just outstanding fucking Republicans and I'm tired of them. Pop me back up, Will. Pop me back up. <laughs> Pop me back up. Pop me back up. So despite this, a long fought victory accomplished by the rideshare drivers of Minnesota and their their allies and their comrades. Once again, these people's needs have been denied. And we know why they're denied. Part of it has to do with corporate greed, capitalism's insistence on maximizing profit to 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 the detriment and to the exploitation of its workers. And let's be clear. Uber and Lyft were very profitable, profitable companies. They made a shit ton of fucking money. They have the money. They can pay these people. They just don't want to pay these people. They want to keep the gig economy the way it is as independent contractors so that they don't have any responsibilities as employers to their employees. But if they're not employees, well, then they don't give a fuck about them. And these people have to pay for everything. They got to pay for their own medical. They got to pay out of pocket for their vehicle maintenance and repairs and all kinds of stuff. And how much are they getting compensated? Especially when you factor in the, as, as Kalechi say, the cause he lives, (laughs) The, 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 the cost of living is preposterous. And these wages are not going up quick enough. And in the places where wages are going up, it is in spite of Democrats. It's in spite of congressional Democrats. It is usually more progressive city councils that are taking the initiative to raise the local minimum wage because the federal government is not raising the fucking minimum wage $7.25 in the year 2023? The audacity of hoes. I don't know what to do. (laughs) I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I would say run better candidates, but Bama's just get co-opted, right? I hate the Democrats. I hate them to pieces. We ain't never going to get, and we're never going to (laughs) survive unless what y'all, we get a little crazy. We're going to have to get crazy on these motherfuckers. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't even know what that means, but I know it means exactly that. We are never going to survive unless we get a little crazy. It is time for Radical revolutionary thinking. That's why I uh, encourage all of you all, to, as you all do, to please continue to watch, subscribe, follow, engage, comment, chat at Black Power Media. Because my my 
my my comrades got the answers that I do not. <laughs> okay, that I do not. I'm just I'm just a very good error of the grievances. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to solutions, you got to go over there. You got to go over there. If you want to hear the, the real shit being recounted in a very real way, you come here. But when you need the solutions, you go over there. You go over there. <laughs> you go over there. Because um, I go over there to listen, learn, and, uh, you know, crack on my bruvs because, you know, it, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. So Black Power Media is, 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 the, is the repository, I would say, for finding out the answers to these questions that I ask over here, <laughs> the answers and the solutions likely lie over there. So big up to BPM, big up to all my, my bruvs, my sister and my, my gender non-conforming family over there at black power media. Keep spreading the word, everybody. The channel is growing. Thank you all so much who come over and watch the remix morning show faithfully. Those numbers are picking up Charlie. We doing one eye over that jump. So anyway, let me get the fuck up out of here. Peace, infinite content. I appreciate it.